Hello and welcome to a very special interview I have for you today. It's Brett Taylor here and I'm stepping outside the usual golf boundaries with a very unique guest. Today I have three-time Olympian, 2012 London Olympic bronze medalist in swimming. I have Canadian Brent Hayden with me on the line. Brent's medal came in this year's 100 meter freestyle event at the Olympics and Brent is also notably the 2007 gold medal world champion in the same 100 meter freestyle event. Today I'll be speaking with Brent about the mental side of swimming and the psychology of sports. I think it'll be interesting to see the parallels across sports as I step outside these golf limits. Thanks for joining me, Brent. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, and first, congratulations again on your Olympic success. That is uh, quite a medal that you have. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> How does it feel to be a bronze medalist? Oh, it feels uh, it's like it feels amazing. Like, it literally feels like a gold medal. Um, you know, 2004 and 2008, um, those Olympics didn't go very well for me. Um, and I had pretty much won a gold medal at every single international competition there was, except for the Olympics. So an Olympic medal uh, really was the missing uh, piece, um, you know, from the whole puzzle of, uh, of what was going to be my career. And so being able to kind of cap it off with uh, with a medal, you know, it wasn't gold, wasn't silver, but still an Olympic medal. Um, it just like, it, it felt amazing. Awesome. That's great. Um, and before we get into sort of the psychology of swimming, um, you know, what are you up to these days? Oh, you know, I'm uh, in that whole transition period, you know, where, um, you know, athletes retire from sport and they try to figure out, you know, what now? Um, so really I'm um, focusing a lot of my time on uh, on building my, uh, my photography and filming career. But at the same time, um, supporting my wife. Um, she just had an album uh, come out earlier um, or later, uh, That's great. I, I know you're doing a bit of traveling and speaking as well. So, um. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I do a lot of uh, motivational talks and uh, and small coaching, um, you know, here and there. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, you know, how important? Getting right into it now. You know, how important is the mental side of swimming to your performance and your success? I don't doubt that at all. Um, and, you know, before we get into the actual mindset of during the race, what you know, how important are goals to your, you know, your motivation and your focus? And, um, you know, do you set a lot of different goals or is it just all about the time? Um, for me, I try to te- uh, keep my goal setting, um, you know, as simple as possible. You know, I was kind of the kid uh, growing up um, that kind of gets the coach frustrated because, you know, the coach would be like, go home.
much, although they, they definitely they definitely were there in their own um, their own regards. But in uh, in terms of just specific goal setting, that was kind of like the you know the mothership of uh, of that that encompassed everything that I was doing. Okay, so you know you said in there that you kind of focused on one main goal. Um, do you think it's possible to have too many goals then? And and do you think that having that one primary goal keeps you focused on it? enough to uh you know drive that success is that a piece yeah, of the puzzle I, I think if you um like you know in swimming i just felt like if um if you were setting too many different uh goals then um then your mind wasn't uh wasn't really focused on on one thing you had so many different things that you're thinking about and i felt like it just kind of made uh it just kind of made the race a lot more complex than it really needed to be yeah so if you can um you know because you really gotta gotta have your mind focused Speaking of in the moment, how important is it to be focused on the present when you are swimming that, you know, that bronze medal race? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah, like, um, I think just swimming in that moment, you know, I'd never been in in that moment before uh, being in that Olympic final, you know, 2008, you know, I was expecting, uh, you know, to be in, you know, for myself as well as everybody else was sort of in, you know, in the whole country kind of thing, like, uh, was expecting me to be in that final, but. You know, I didn't get there, so I'm, you know, here in London, there I was finally um, on the deck for for that twenty uh, or for that Olympic final, that individual Olympic final. Um, you know, I, I think just kind of being in that moment um, allowed uh, me to reach down, uh, you know, into a part of me that I was never able to really reach down into before. Yeah. You know, like um, you can always get up and and try your, you know, try your hardest. But it really takes that special moment for something else to to come out of you. And unfortunately, I know some people when they when they kind of get into that moment and they start feeling that um, sort of a feeling kind of come through, it it scares them a little bit. You know, it's like some yeah. people will call it nerves or you know butterflies in the tummy or something like that. Um, sure. Uh, I always knew that you know for me when I was feeling nervous, um, that was a good thing. Absolutely. You know, that yeah. was something that my body was um, was doing to prepare to do something great. And so if I wasn't feeling the nerves, that was actually when I would get scared. And so nerves and, and fear for me were always two different things. Um, but definitely for that for that race, um, you know, those nerves and those butterflies, like like it, like they it was just running wild. And I told myself, this is good. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, it's it's an important differentiation that that fear and nervousness and and you know the perception of it and and allowing it to be a good thing rather than something that prevents your success. So yeah, like uh, my coach always said, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Well, if you're feeling good before a race, you know, like like if it's just like an, an everyday normal day, well then that's not a good thing. You got to be uncomfortable. Right. No, for sure. Um, yeah, you had mentioned, um, you know, before when I had spoken to you about, uh, learning from failures. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like, um, you know, I think that's what, um, what real sport is. It's not just about, um, you know, finding success over and over and over again. It's, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot about, you know, failing at something or not getting the result you wanted and really taking a step back and being like, okay. Now, why didn't it go the way that I needed it to go? And then figuring out exactly, um, you know, the process that's going to take to actually um, make sure that that never happens again. And I know, um, I know, you know, specifically my, uh, you know, my hard-earned lesson um, from uh, from the Beijing Olympics of not making the final um, really came through in London when I was in, when I was up for the um, up for my semifinal race because I knew that I never wanted to go through that again. And if 
Okay. And, you know, even though I was still winning my races, um, I knew that that part of my race was, um, was not going so well. So I really took a lot of time uh, over the last year to really build up um, my race from the starting block out. Okay. And I went to Estonia to work with a biomechanist over there. I had a swimmer from South Africa, one of my main competitors, actually, um, come up uh, to Vancouver to train with me and help me with my starts. And then we just did so much work with my, with my coach, my biomechanist, um, here in Vancouver. And it really was like a full year, really, really focusing on this on this part of my race that was just that just never really went well. Um, and you know, in the semifinal again, you know, my race it really didn't really go all that well. You know, from a, from a technical um, viewpoint, but then uh, the final, all that hard work on that start really came down to that one perfect start that I finally had, and really think that really got me um, got me into position um, for the rest of the race to make the podium. Hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, you know every sport has has a technical aspect that really does have a significant influence on you know your capabilities and and optimizing your performance. That's uh, that's neat. Um, yeah. you know, how, how much does, well, let me step back a sec, you know, when you were going into this Olympics, um, you know, obviously I'm sure you had probably set your sights on, on wanting to win, you know, gold and, and be a top performer. What, how, how much did visualization and self-talk, um, fit into that as far as preparing yourself mentally for, for the Olympics? Did you visualize yourself as a champion going in? Do you, you kind of talk yourself up a bit um, in preparation for that event? How does that factor in? Um, you know, this is probably the point the, or the place where I kind of differ from most athletes because, uh, you know, I, I know from, you know, even speaking to my own team psychologists over the years, they always talk about the importance of, uh, of visualization. Um, but I was, I was definitely a little bit different where I actually didn't really like to do too much of that because I was kind of felt like um, the more I thought about the race, um, the more, um, the more I'd sort of talk myself out of it, you know, because I start, you know, I'd start to like um, almost like doubt myself a little bit. Okay. Um, I start saying like negative things um, to myself, so I actually I would just um, avoid that whole that, that whole process by just not thinking about it at all and just relying on the work that I do in practice. Um, you know, because you know we're working on our starts and practice all the time. We're working on our time. We're working on our stroke and. So just kind of allowing um, all that work that I've done in practice to translate into second nature in my race and not really having to really visualize uh, too much before I went in. Um, yeah, like, I don't know, but I, that's really just what um, what worked for me. Yeah. I, you know, I, I know that for a lot of other athletes, you know, they, they need that. You know, they, they have to be able to picture it. Um, but I think... Um, the day of my hundred meter freestyle, though it was um, it was different. Um, I mean, I was trying really hard not to think about the race, but you know, the day of the Olympic final, you know, of course those thoughts are going to come into your head, and there's just there's just nothing I could do about it. But the strangest thing was that this was one of the times where I was actually intentionally trying to picture myself off the podium, like I was actually trying to picture myself um, off of it because you know of all the you know, the failure that I saw in, uh, in Beijing where it was just, like, it was just heartbreaking. And, right. But it was, it was really weird. Like, no matter how hard I tried to actually picture, you know, the po- the worst possible outcome, that image just could ne- it never actually come to my head. Every time I thought about not being on the podium, the more I just saw myself actually being on the podium. Hmm. And that wasn't intentional. You know, I never actually wanted to picture it and, you know, and put myself into the position where, you know, it's podium or nothing. Right. You know, I want. It was that was just the only image that I could actually um that actually just came into my head. No matter how much I tried to think, you know, yeah, off the podium picture. Okay. There was always a medal there, and it was it was weird. Hmm. It was like I was being told something, you know. Yeah, it's like your body was, uh, your body and your mind, I guess, were telling you that this maybe was that moment, and and uh, you felt good enough to do it, but. I certainly understand your your sort of distinction there. I think with you know setting an expectation um, that might put external pressure on you in a negative way, 
as opposed to you know a visualization and and talking yourself into it from a I guess from a you know a positive perspective in trying to prepare yourself to perform well and and there is a certainly a difference between setting a you know an expectation that that might have a negative influence as opposed to preparing yourself to to have a top performance so um, exactly interesting exactly and uh you know I know you're you're uh you're a black belt in karate how how uh you know it's been noted of course that um, you know the battle of mind, body, and soul, and and uh, the importance of the mind in karate. And and I know you have um, you know spoken before about your your sensei who's influenced you in the past. You know what can you say about the influence of karate and the the mindset associated with it, and how it translated to swimming for you? Um, well, growing up, um, you know, I was always kind of uh, known as that kid that never really paid attention. You know, too well. I I got in trouble all the time at swim practices uh, for not listening, um, and turn, ended up turning out that uh, that I do actually have a bit of a, a hearing um, issue where if you know if there's a lot of background noise, I have a I have a much harder time actually processing um, you know speech. Um, so I think as as a kid, you know, I would just kind of get frustrated. And I would just kind of like you know start doing my own thing, or I just wouldn't pay attention because I would just get frustrated. Well. You know, coaches didn't really like that too much. Um, but when I started doing karate and just, um, you know, having having a sensei that, uh, you know, demanded respect and demanded, um, you know, a certain work ethic, ethic um, it really sort of changed the whole, uh, my whole mindset of, um, of focus around, uh, you know, not just around the dojo, but around the pool as well. And I think that's sort of where I started getting that whole, like, uh, tunnel vision um you know, goal setting, almost, because, you know, like, all this other stuff, to, you know, just really was just a distraction, and so I really became uh, focused, I became uh, a lot more disciplined, and then, too, the other thing, too, is, like, the uh, the physical aspect of it, you know, the uh, the cross-training, um, you know, and getting, uh, you know, a lot more flexible from uh, from the karate, and, you know, all the, all the push-ups and crunches that we have to do, and just all the uh, um, body mechanics, because that was the other thing, too, that I really learned how to how to basically live within uh, within my body because you know like I'm six foot five and I was pretty much you know six foot five by the time I was in grade eight you know so I was growing I was growing really fast and I had no idea of how to actually move within my own body and so karate really taught me you know all the body mechanics and you know I started walking taller and uh, uh, just being able to just move better you know I was like moving less awkwardly um, and it really translated directly into my swimming. And, um, you know, from the moment that my swimming started to improve, you, if you look at it on a calendar, it's like almost exactly when I actually started doing the karate. Um, but then again, like also on the emotional side was just, um, you know, just emotionally what my sensei um, taught me was that like, you know, if you ever want to achieve anything in life, you know, you have to do it with your whole heart, otherwise it's just not worth it. Um, and I, re- like I really took that to heart. I mean, he never said those words um, directly, but every time he uh, he spoke about, uh, you know, the whole heart way, which is what um, Ishinru um, translates to, um, you know, like I, I took that, like, quite literally, you know, and I just, um, I just kind of focused that, uh, into my uh, my swimming hmm. that's a uh, pretty solid advice i'd say you know put your whole heart into it if you want to be successful there's uh, a lot to be said for that it's it's certainly not going to happen if you don't um, you know put in the dedication uh, mm-hmm. that's for sure um you and know, uh, also too like it's not just you know it's not just about showing up to the pool every day and just kind of doing what your coach tells you to but it's a it's about going above and beyond what's actually expected of you. You know, if you're showing up to the pool, you know, that's great. But, you know, once you're in the water, you know, if your coach is telling you, okay, I want you to do this at this effort, you know, it's like, what are you going to do there to separate yourself from the other swimmers? Are you going to go a little bit more than what's actually being asked of you? Right. And, like, there are so many practices where, you know, like, the coach wouldn't even tell us what, what the effort was. I would just, I would just know what he's expecting. And I would just always just do just a little bit more, and I know it kind of pissed my 
you know, my teammates off from time to time because they thought I was just, you know, like I was just trying to beat them or, or whatever. Right. Um, you know, I was just doing what I could in that moment uh, to be better. And, you know, those moments add up. You know, if, if you're doing that every single day, right. it, it adds up. It certainly does. Um, how does that saying go? There's, there's not much traffic on the extra mile. So, yeah, no, it uh, definitely pays dividends to put in the extra time. Um, I know uh, I know you do have to go there. I just want to, you know, throw a couple more questions at you. You know, with uh, mental toughness, you know, you, you talked a little bit about, you know, the dedication and the respect and, and the work ethic with, uh, you know, that came through in karate. Um, you know, how important is, is mental toughness in swimming? Exactly. Um, wow. Um, how how important, you know, in in the heat of competition and getting ready to to dive in, how do you have any strategies for staying focused and for calming your mind and you know being relaxed enough to execute the swim? Yeah. Um, sometimes, like you know, I, I go through my warm up routine, um, and then you know, like I, I spend about half an hour in the pool, um, but then after that. Uh, when it's just kind of between warm up and racing, um, you know, like I'll just I'll just put my headphones on, um, I'll listen to my music, um, and my music choice kind of varies depending on uh, on my mood. You know, if I'm feeling like I'm a little too um, too energized uh, or too hyper, you know, I'll listen to something a little bit more calming. If I'm feeling like I really need to get psyched up and I'm just like I'm just really ready to go, then you know, I'll put on something like a little bit more upbeat, a little bit harder. Um, but then sometimes I just won't listen to my music at all. I'll just talk to the people that are around me. I'll talk to my coach or my massage therapist or, or my teammates and just, you know, talk about just anything, really, you know, have, have some laughs and just, uh, just not even really think about the race. Um, and then when you're in the ready room, then everything sort of, uh, sort of changes. You know, you're in a, you're in a room with, you know, your competitors. If it's a final, there's only seven other, others of them, but you know, if you're, if it's heats, you know, you're looking at like 40 other um, athletes there, not to mention the ones that aren't even in the room with you because if one, they're up, they're other, you know, heats and heats behind you or they've already gone gone through, um, you know, and just trying to stay calm in, um, in that moment. That's sort of where, um, you know, my uh, people kind of tell me it's the, the Zen warrior kind of, a, kind of comes through, you know, I'm, I start feeling like, uber uber uh, you know fierce on the on the inside you know that's when the butterflies start to you know kick in but on the outside i'm totally calm right you know, i don't i don't um 
Okay. Uh, honestly, I just sit there. Yeah. I think that I, I let my nerves sort of uh, sort of take over on yeah. the inside, but the outside, I just I just stay calm. Right. I think that the uh, you know comes across in in most sports where you know those butterflies and nervous energy and anxiety, but you know channeled in a good way is really on the inside, but showing that strength on the outside to you know that calmness of mind, even when you are feeling that energy. So yeah, interesting. Um, last question. I know you've you've kind of touched on on this throughout our interview today, and you've mentioned a few different aspects of swimming that have contributed to your success. And how important is teamwork and coaching? You know, you had mentioned biomechanist, and um, you know, I'm sure you've had a, a swing coach and a massage therapist, as you mentioned as well. What? How important is that group? And and how many groups is there? How many different team members are there um, to make Brent Hayden successful? Well, we have, um, we have a pretty good group of guys um, at UBC. Um, I'm sure now that I'm gone, there's probably a few new faces there that, uh, that I don't know. Um, but, like, I really made a point to, you know, to just surround myself with, um, you know, with the teammates that I felt would, um, would benefit, you know, me to be around. You know, whether it's, um, you know, they're, they're a good training partner or they've just got a really good head on their shoulders. Um, you know, I've been I'm really picky about, I really like the, uh, you know, that part of the discussion you talked about your peers and the people you hang out with, and you know, and another another quote that I've heard in the past, and and I and I believe in as well is you know you become most like the five people that you hang out with the most, and um, you know if you're going to hang out with people that are leaders and positive influencers and. Um, you know, people with a success mindset, it, it does have an impact and an influence on your own success and who you become. And, yeah. um, you know, I think, I think that is, is underrated in a lot of cases, but, um, it's, it's important obviously to your success and, and to other people I've spoken to as well. So like, um, I don't, I can never remember where I heard this quote and it had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with swimming, but it, it kind of just put things in perspective and you know this is going to sound kind of weird but it was um the herd only moves as fast as the slowest buffalo <laughs> yeah you know and well i don't want to hang out with the slow buffaloes <laughs> pretty, pretty much uh yeah you know, pretty much the way it went 
no it's it's true and and you know it's pretty hard to to uh to learn a lot of positive lessons from someone that is performing at a lower level than you as well mm-hmm. um so wow well um you know brent i i really appreciate you giving me the time to uh to have this chat it's been very insightful i see a lot of uh you know a lot of interesting points that you've made here tonight that i think cross all sports and um and it, and it is interesting to see it from a different perspective in in from the pool in your case and and in golf with the the other interviews that i've done so um so again appreciate your time and and uh i always like to give my my uh interviewee that the chance to have the final word so if you have a a recommendation on on the topic of sports psychology or a shout out um um go ahead um i think uh i think over the last uh the last few years of my career i think it um you know it's something that you only realize you know towards um towards the end or after or after you've been involved um you know at an elite level for so long is that you never know everything about your sport you know and um there's always there's always always something uh something to learn there's always something new to try and i think that's something that um that a lot of elite athletes um they don't realize because you know they're they're so good at what they do that they just don't think that they could possibly be better. Well, you know what? I won the gold medal at the World Championships in 2007, and if I believed that I couldn't possibly be better, I would never have gotten that bronze medal. And so I was, I was keen on on learning, and that learning process never stopped. Yeah. No, that's uh, great advice, and I think important to becoming successful for anyone constant learning and and keeping that that education at top of mind so um you know thanks again brent um it's been a pleasure and uh that is quite a medal that you have there it's a lot heavier than i would have expected it to be <laughs> but uh thanks brent so much yeah it's uh very cool to have this chat with you so um i appreciate it thanks very much well thank you okay bye